gonna take this guy and we're just gonna <laughs> Hold on. That was a fail. Fail is too extreme. You still have pancakes. Hi, I'm Genevieve, Deputy Editor and Cooking Columnist at NYT Cooking, and I'm here today to make brunch. We are gonna make lemon ricotta pancakes with a blueberry syrup. I love the way ricotta makes pancakes really tender and fluffy and creamy at the same time, and they give them this natural dairy sweetness that is so nice. When I make lemon ricotta pancakes, I actually like to make the pancakes a little sweeter. Like with standard pancakes, I usually make them not too sweet so that I can drench them with syrup. But here, I want them to have a little sweetness, so I have my sugar here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make a lemon sugar to give the pancakes a lovely lemon flavor. So what I do is I actually take a microplane zester, which is a must-have tool if you love citrus, and I'm just zesting the lemon right over the sugar. And to make the sugar really get the flavor of the zest, I'm gonna gently, gently rub it. So I want all of this zest to be coated in sugar so that it doesn't actually release any bitterness into the sugar. And the sugar turns this sort of pale yellow color. So I'm just gonna let that sit and get all lemony. And then I'm gonna start the syrup. So I'm actually gonna start with blueberries in a saucepan. Squeeze a tablespoon of lemon juice over them. And what you're trying to do here is create a compote with a blueberry. So I'm just gonna let them sit and those blueberries are gonna actually start to burst. I can hear my blueberry sizzling, which is exactly what I wanna hear. I'm gonna go ahead and now add the syrup. I'm not trying to create a blueberry jam. I actually wanna keep the blueberries as whole as possible. I'm gonna get started on the pancake batter while my griddle is heating. So I'm just gonna mix the flour, baking powder, some fine salt, and I'm just mixing these dry ingredients first, and then we're gonna do our wet ingredients. Usually when you add vanilla, you sometimes add it later, but because I have this sugar already infused with this lemon flavor, what I wanna do is actually infuse the sugar even further with the liquid vanilla. It actually just gets really evenly distributed into the sugar itself and it mixes with the lemon. The next thing we're gonna do is add our eggs. And that can go right into the sugar. I really want to create air in my pancakes and it's gonna happen at this stage. The beauty of eggs is that you can actually see when they're getting air in them because you see all these tiny bubbles. So once your eggs are all whisked in, you're gonna add your dairy ingredients. Of course, having the ricotta because the ricotta keeps the pancake batter so moist and gives it this really unique tenderness that's so delicious. I'm just adding a little buttermilk. And the last thing I found that made a huge difference in these pancakes, and in all pancakes, is having some melted butter in the batter. I'm actually gonna keep using my whisk to make sure that this is smooth. I love the lumpiness of ricotta in some dishes, but in this application, I actually really want it totally incorporated. The key to pancakes is not over mixing the flour. You want it to be incorporated and so you don't have like big dry clumps, but you also don't want to overbeat it. So instead of just folding it with the spatula, I use my whisk to really gently mix it in. And that helps it evenly distribute through the wet ingredients. So when I get to this stage where there are just a few traces of flour left, I'll switch to the spatula and then finish by folding in the rest of that flour just so there aren't little dry flour lumps. I'm gonna see if my griddle is ready and the best way to test that is with a little bit of cold water. So I just take a little cold water and I splatter it and I can see that this is taking a second to evaporate. So I'm gonna turn my heat up just a little bit. You don't want the water to evaporate right when it hits the pan but it should sizzle away pretty quickly. So I'm gonna test again. There we go. You want to butter your griddle. What I tend to do is just rub a little pat over the surface. And so you can see that it's bubbling and it's melting, but it's not burning. I'm going to take a scoop of batter. So usually about a quarter cup is the amount that I think is right. So what you want is you want to hear that sizzle. And now we're just waiting to see bubbles begin to form and pop on the surface. So I'm peeking 
And I can see this is currently the perfect golden brown, but it's not quite as cooked as I want it to be, so I just turn the heat down. All right, so this is the most important part of keeping pancakes really light and fluffy. It's in the flipping, right? I don't think flip is the right word. You don't want to like flip it, because if you flip it, you're gonna burst all those bubbles. Instead of flipping the whole spatula over, ease it over. You sort of give it a little tap in the center, and if it springs back, you know that it's done. I'm gonna put this on a rack because you don't wanna put it right onto a plate because that's gonna make it steam and get soggy. In the most ideal world, you have people all ready to eat and you don't have to put it on a rack at all. You can just hand it to someone. All right, so we're gonna get our next batch going. I'm gonna put down another generous pat of butter. You wanna to try to get your batter on there before the butter goes from brown to burned. You could taste test now. So you can see that this is nice and fluffy. It's more like a cake than anything. Mm. If I tasted it and I thought, mmm, I want this sweeter, I want even more buttermilk, you can actually add a dash to your batter that's left. A little more sugar, a little more salt, a little more buttermilk, a little more ricotta. It's this myth that when you make any sort of batter that you like can't go back and you can't do anything about it, and that might be true for like a big cake. The pancake batter, waffle batter, after you've tasted one, you can actually go back and adjust a little bit. And this is also a good time to check on the syrup. So there isn't really a doneness per se. I mean, it's been done for some time. It's pretty runny now because it's heated, but if you want to make it even thicker, you can throw in more fresh blueberries. So if I was having people over for brunch and we we're sitting down, I would for sure just take a lovely bite of my stack of pancakes. I love how the butter like melts into the warm syrup. So the way I tend to like to eat my pancakes is I actually like to pick them up with my hands and I'll actually tear it because when you tear it, you preserve the crumb and you're just sort of letting all that airiness live. And I'll just sort of get some blueberries on there and then I'll take a bite. Yeah, definitely better and you eat it by hand. So when you take a bite of these, you definitely get this creamy milkiness, and it is a blend of the ricotta and the buttermilk and the butter all together. It's not just the milkiness of ricotta, but there's a tiny hint of that savoriness and a really distinct sort of cheesy tang, and I just love how that adds that extra oomph to these pancakes. Mmm.